welcome to another episode of Sugar Free Self Care TV. I am so excited because today I have a very special guest. This is Jessica, and she is here as part of my, I like to call it my client success series, and I'm so excited. I wanted to highlight her and bring her on because she's just been such a badass in my Impulse Mastery program that is finishing up right now for this round. So anyways, thank you so much for being here, Jessica, and welcome. Thank you. I'm super excited to be here, and I appreciate you asking me to come on. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. I'm so, so proud of you. Um, so before we get started, do you mind telling everyone, like, um, first of all, like, what do you do? And also, what, like... What got you interested in signing up? Like, where were you um, before joining this program? So, um, well, I'm a nurse. Uh, I work full time as a nurse and I am a caregiver for my mother and my younger brother and um, doing all the things like many people out there and had uh, gone through a divorce, I don't know, about six or seven years ago and had this perpetual 20 pounds, right? I had this 20, about 20, 25 pounds that I had gained, um, hit 40 during my divorce, you know, gained the weight and really was uh, struggling to get it off, you know, as a nurse, as a, as a coach myself, just trying to really um, figure it all out on my own. Uh, I was, I felt like I was missing something, right? And, and I was familiar about, you know, mindset and working on your mindset and things like that. But I just wasn't able to take myself to the next level. And I knew I needed, um, I knew I needed a coach and I had been following you for a while. And so I was excited to join your program. And oh my goodness, you guys, she was following me when I made my first <laughs> podcast. I didn't even know that I, I was a weight loss coach for nurses like three years ago. And she was following my very first podcast. You can probably still see in the interwebs, but it's the permanent weight loss <laughs> yeah. in nurses podcast. I was like, oh my goodness. So yeah, so she's been following me for a while. So, um, so anyway, but that's amazing though, Jessica, that even with all those things, because those are really, those are really common things I hear that a lot of barriers for people, right? Like, especially for you as a nurse in a very, um, in a profession that's usually very high stress and also has long hours and then also caregiving for your family. Um, I think like your mom and your brother, mm -hmm. right? And then even going through that relation, the, the divorce, um, you know, how was it that you were able to still sign up even with all those things going on in your life? How did you overcome that fear? Well, I think that in part of, you know, as I also have a, a small business um, that I have started coaching, uh, helping caregivers kind of take back their health. And, and I felt like I was being a little, uh, I really wanted to get control of my own health, right? I really felt like, um, I needed to slow down before I could really and truly help other people. I needed to slow down and really um, show up and take care of myself and stop being complacent and just saying, okay, well, you know, my spouse loves me the way that I am and I'm still showing up. I'm still doing all the things, even though I was carrying all this extra weight around that was really slowing me down physically and mentally. Um, I just knew that I needed to, if how could I help others if I didn't help myself was really what it came down to. Right, right. And that, that's definitely because as some of you guys know, I was a nurse myself, that's definitely a mindset. Um, I think for women, especially that we have to take care of everyone else before ourselves. So I do applaud you for making that investment and, and just being willing to do that, you know, and commit to yourself, which is amazing. Um, so during this past um, several months that you're in the mastermind, for you, like, what do you think was... Um, maybe some things that, like, in what way do you think going through the program or the coaching, how, how, what did you get from that, that helped you, I guess, change your eating habits? Like, what was the biggest, like, learning moments for you that you might have never knew before? Well, you know, I really took some time and kind of thought about it. And I think that one thing that really sticks out in my head was we had talked about fast thinking and slow thinking. Mm -hmm. And I thought about why that mattered. So why that basic concept was so important to me. And I think it really does relate to nursing where we're constantly on this high alert and we're putting fires out all the time, right? And we have to think quickly. We have to make fast decisions. We have to move, we have to go. 
And I thought that it was okay that I was making those types of decisions in my life, right? In my eating habits, make a decision quick, just move on, move on. You know, you don't have time to stop. Um, and I thought that that was, well, for a long time, that's just how I functioned. And then when I was able to actually realize that that fast thinking was not my real like planning thinking, right? Um, that that was what was in a way was great in the field, but when I'm trying to take care of myself, isn't always the way, isn't the way that was helping me get to my goal. I needed to actually slow down and really take some time to think, is this the right decision or not, right? And so it was hard transitioning from being a family caregiver, making fast decisions, trying to help everyone do all the things to then, wait a minute, I need to slow down and actually like make a decision of if this is what I really should be eating or not. Right. And that to be like the hardest thing to do sometimes, especially if you're respond, you're so used to responding to all the things and putting out fires. Like it, it's kind of like we're in the society too, in this culture where busyness is really glorified and working yeah. hard is like not stopping to take a break is, um, that's kind of like seen as being more productive or you're more um, I don't know, you're more worthy or whatever that might be, you know? So it's really hard to slow down in those moments. And, and when you did slow down, when you did take those moments to like maybe reflect or really plan or, or sort of think about your decisions more, like what, what's, what shifts or changes did you start noticing for you in your body or your mindset? Um, I started to notice that I was eating out of anxiety. Just mm. a Times, right. If I wasn't really hungry, I was looking for breaks. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I needed to take a break and, and rest my mind. So the way that I thought that I could do that is, oh, I need to have a snack, right? That gives me an opportunity to take a break and decrease my anxiety a little bit through food. Um, and that was really what I was, was doing, was trying to heal my anxiety from constantly going all the time and making all these decisions. And I became very full of anxiety. And then I was eating in order to manage the anxiety. Right. And that's what most people think. Like when we eat, we're, we're, we think we're getting rid of the anxiety, but, but like, what did you learn about that? Like when you were eating in that way, what, like, how did you actually, like, what did you learn about the anxiety and what was going on with you? Was that actually helping the problem when you ate or? Yeah, no, for sure not. Because then of course, then you're, you realize after you've eaten it, you didn't really need it. And then now you've added to your anxiety because now you've eaten food that you know you didn't really eat and you start beating yourself up. So I was really adding to my pile of, you know, rocks that were on my back, so to speak, by doing all of this eating um, to try to help solve for something that it wasn't, it wasn't helping. It was just making a different problem, really. Right. Right. And then once you eliminated that snacking, then what happened for you? Well, then once you eliminate the snacking, you realize you have anxiety mm -hmm. right. <laughs> All for the anxiety. Right. Um, and then when, yeah. I'm able to, to, to recognize that I'm that, okay, this is just anxiety. I just need to calm down and take a break and give myself a moment. What I really need is just to get up and walk around and take a break. I don't really need food. Right. And so just finding an alternate way to manage my anxiety as opposed to using food to manage my anxiety. Right, right. And when you gain that skill to just be more aware, more thoughtful about your decisions, um, not as reactive to all the situations going on in your day, what, what changes did you start noticing in your life or what results did you start getting from that? Yeah, I mean, when you're not as reactive, there's a lot of different things, right? You stop eating the food. Mm -hmm. You stop doing what maybe will be causing the anxiety, right? Multitasking, having, you know, three, four different things going at once. Um, it, it just allowed me to, to realize what was causing the anxiety so I could solve for that, right? Instead of trying to constantly solve for the anxiety. I didn't find, I needed to find what was causing the anxiety so that I wouldn't have it so much. Right, right. And that's the beauty of when you take away the food. Like I always tell this to people, like this is the core of the Impulse Mastery program and what we do. It's just that 
it's not about like, oh, just lose weight and, you know, diet and okay, you lose weight. It's not about that. It's just like, why are you overeating? Like, what's the root there? Like, what are you trying to avoid? And how can you actually solve the problem without food? And it sounded like for you, like you became better at problem solving. You became more curious. You were more mindful of how you're spending your time. And, um, and then you're able to allow anxiety without even needing to eat anymore, which resulted in, um, I think you said you lost like 10 pounds of that weight loss that, yeah. that, that had been a struggle for, for several years. years, you said? Oh yeah, for several years. For, for the longest time, I didn't think I could get past that. You know, I had lost a few pounds on my own from my divorce, but then I was kind of stuck in that 10 pound zone. I wanted to, of course, blame it on my hormones. I'm 47 now. Um, I wanted to blame it on the fact that now I've got a desk job. Um, now, you know, just life is different for me and I just was going to accept it, right? And just accept feeling uncomfortable in my body. Um, oh, that's fun. But, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I was able to then you know, shed those perpetual 10 pounds that I just thought was going to be on me forever, right? That I, I just thought was going to just be part of me. And then who knows what was going to happen, right? If I accepted that, you know, maybe I would accept more. So I just wasn't willing to accept it. So um, it made, it made a big difference having the coaching kind of take me to the next level. Right. Right. And your receptiveness to being coach. I do want to commend you on that because I mean, it's not being in a coaching program that's going to solve your problems. It's like you even told me, it's like you have to be willing to do the work, to be open to the coaching, to showing up, which you did. Like you guys, man, she she showed up like every week. She did the homework. She she like did like she worked her butt off to get to where she is. But because she did that, she's able to shed those like perpetual pounds. I like yeah, yeah. pounds the alliteration and um and then also like what did that mean for you to to actually see you can get you can lose the weight and and that you're you know in that process how, how did you feel knowing you could do that oh it makes you feel like you can you can move on and and kind of up level your life in different areas for sure um it it just gives you the opportunity to and, and I have to say I did the work and it is work you know to, to look at your mind and I think that's the hardest work was taking a look at what I was doing and being like, oh shoot, I'm not over that yet. Or, oh shoot, I'm still doing this. Um, that's what's hard, okay? It's not, it doesn't take a ton of time. I don't want people to think, oh, I don't have time for this. It takes some time to pay attention to what you're doing, <clears throat> but the attention that you pay is in the moment. It's, you know, 90 seconds, two minutes, um, a few minutes, you know, journaling in the morning, Right. It doesn't actually take a ton of time. Yeah. It doesn't take a ton of time. What takes time is getting your mind prepared to like really take a look at what's happening and being willing to be coached and doing the work that you give because it's there for a reason, right? If you skip, if you skip paying attention to why you overate and you just want to push it aside, mm -hmm. That's where all the gold is, right? It's in the overeating and learning from it, unfortunately, because that's what's going to happen. If you don't learn from that stuff, though, you just want to push it aside. You're not going to gain any of the juice, so to speak, from, from doing stuff. Right, right. That's exactly what I say. It's like the gold is in all those moments you do want to eat because there's always yeah. a lesson there. And um, just for anyone who is also maybe a nurse or a caregiver or some kind of profession where there's a lot of, you know, maybe there's long work hours. Like, how did you find the time for yourself to show up to the calls and do the homework and do the journaling every morning? How did you find the time for that? Well, you know, it's, it, it doesn't have to be a, a large process to do it. It's, it's um, you know, 15, 20 minutes. You don't even have to journal that long if you're, if, you know, planning the food, I had to simplify my food. I had to stop getting, being confused about what to eat mm -hmm. and simplify my food. Um, and it, it doesn't need to take a lot of time. I mean, you do need some time on Sunday, whatever, whatever day you want to prep your food. Um, but the way I found time to listen to the modules was really doing it in my car when I'm driving back and forth to appointments. Um, listening to it while my daughter's at lacrosse practice, 
um, bringing coaching calls to the cross practice, sitting in the car, doing my coaching calls, um, oh my you know, uh, and really I ended up doing the permanent weight loss mastermind, um, coaching calls on Monday nights, which was my date night with my significant other. So, um, we always did power hour anyway about household. First, we did an hour of chores or whatever to get stuff out of the way. And then we would have our date night and I decided to forget the chores uh, and do the <laughs> do the, the calls instead because chores are always gonna be there, right? And as I said earlier, you know, you just get in this perpetual thing where you think you have to do chores all the time and you're not moving the needle. And I needed to take some time to really be able to move the needle. And if it meant an hour out of um, my night, then that's what it meant. And, and quite frankly, when you really hone in on what you need to be doing and the skills that you need to be working on, it takes less time than beating yourself up. It takes less time than sitting in front of the TV and trying to convince yourself not to watch TV. It takes less time than um, all the time that you're spending spinning in your brain, right? Or wasting time in other places. I don't watch a lot of TV, um, uh, but I do watch movies and, you know, occasionally and things like that, but I don't consistently watch TV. So, you know, eliminating those kinds of things. Right. Right. And I love that you're sharing that because you really can be in control of your time. Like, I think we have this concept that we can't, you know, we just have to do all the things, but what you're, what you're showing everyone is like, you really don't like you get to decide what's important to you. What's a priority for you. And sometimes if things aren't done, it's not the end of the world. Like you, you could, you could prioritize what, what really matters to you because that's going to move your life forward. Not just responding to all the things that, and being busy, that doesn't change your life. Right. Yeah, no, I agree. I think I, I was a, the queen of you saying I'm busy. I'm the queen. I can't because I'm too busy. I'm the queen of this, I'm, you know, because I have too much, I have too much on my plate, but when you really stop and take a look at where are you spending the time um, you can find some time for yourself. Um, and while I do think it's important to sit down and rest and watch a program once in a while, it just isn't necessary to do, you know, right. You know, every day kind of thing. So. Right. Right. Well, that is amazing. And so like, what's, what's next for you in the future? What, what are you like, what are you, um, set, setting on accomplishing for yourself in the next several months? And and I'm so excited you're going to keep the coaching moving forward after this. But um, but yeah, what are your next goals moving forward? So definitely my next goals are to, I still have a few more pounds. The amount that I had had targeted for the end of the um, permanent weight loss, I have not met, which is fine because I have so many other lessons that I've learned. I really, truly feel like it's just a matter of time before I get there. It took a while, a few months for it to really click with me. And so I just need to can keep up consistency um, but I'm definitely looking forward to toning up and um, kind of showing middle-aged women that uh, we don't have to just, you know, concede to the hormones and let life take its course on us and, and lay back and, you know, not, not take control. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's an amazing mission. I'm like feeling fired up when you speak about it. I'm just like, oh my gosh, we got to break that pattern. We got to break yeah. that mold. And you're like embodying that. So I'm just so freaking proud of you and so excited. Um, do you have any advice for anyone who's like on the fence thinking of joining if they're kind of like, I'm not sure it's a lot of money. I don't have the time. Like what yeah. advice would you say to those people? Um, well, for sure. I thought the same thing, right? I, of course I don't have the money. I have kids. I, you know, uh, time, all that kind of stuff. I just, I've spent a lot of money on other programs and I really feel like the difference is I didn't have the coaching the one-on-one -on -one kind of coaching with you, even in the program, we did the program and there was other people in the group coaching. I still got the one-on-one -on -one time and I still learned from other people because a lot of times other people's experiences can be translated into our own experiences. Um, I think that over the, the course of time, I would have spent the $5,000 on something else. I just, you know, I would have. And to be able to, or whatever amount of money, uh, you know, the, the program is, but what I think what I learned is that, um, it's worth it. It's just, it's super worth it to make that push and kind of believe in yourself that you can do it. 
And in this forum where you get the coaching and you have the homework and you have, you know, whatever it is that you're offering, it's just, uh, it's, it's enough to kind of push, push everybody from that good to great level, right? It just is enough. And um, I think that when you take a look at all the things we spend money on, um, you know, I had to let go of my start, my weekly Starbucks habit. <laughs> oh, darn it. <laughs> And I saved money there. And, uh, you know, you, when you really want something, when you really are thinking that, you know, you really want something, you really find ways to um, get the money for what it is that you need. And I think that it's just, it's a, such a time saver to spend the money and put yourself first. Right. Oh my gosh. That couldn't have been said better. Oh my gosh. That just gives me goosebumps. It's like, it's so worth it when you are your priority. And then just when you're feeling good, when you're feeling in a great mental state and physical state, like everyone else around you benefits. And I'm so glad that you're that example, Jessica, and we're going to keep that going moving forward. But mm -hmm. again, I'm so proud of you. And I wanted to thank you so much for joining us today. And um, thank you for being an example of what's possible for nurses and caregivers out there. Yeah, no, thank you for, for believing in me. And, and truly, I think, it, doing this makes you a better, you know, I did, did this for myself, but it's also made me a better family caregiver. It's also made me a better nurse. I show up better with my family and that alone, whether you lose weight or not, that alone is worth, worth its weight in gold. So I thank you. Oh my gosh. That's amazing, Jessica. Thank you so much. Yes. I'm so happy to have you on and can't wait for what you're going to accomplish in the next three months. So yeah. excited. All right, everyone, take care. Thanks for tuning in to this amazing episode in my client success series. I'll see you next time. And if you're ready to sign up for the next round of the Impulse Mastery program, go ahead and check out the caption below for the link to apply. All right, guys, take care. Have an amazing, amazing day. Bye, guys.